Good evening, this is uh, Rashad Metro coming to you live from my YouTube channel as I continue on my part series. The week that was college football history review, the 1970 college football season. This is uh, for week 8 for October 31st, 1970. This is a um, continuation of this the recap of the 1970 college football season. So this is week 8. We'll talk about the games and the recap the games that were played on October 31st, 1970 for week 8. Here we go. Dartmouth shut out Yale 10-0. Coach Bob Blackman's final Dartmouth squad was perhaps his finest as it brings to the Ivy title. Blackman's seventh in 16 years. Indians finished the 1970 season 9-0, including six shutouts to become final Ivy team to win the Lambert Trophy. Symbolic of Eastern Supremacy, the last Ivy squad to finish in the AP Top 20, number 14 at season end. Dartmouth rolled up 480 yards of offense, held star Bulldogs running back Dick Jerron, the nation's number five rusher, to only 50 yards on 17 carries. Big Green spent all afternoon marching up and down hollow turf of a Yale Bowl, but five times they failed to score from inside Yale 18-yard line. Dartmouth overcame three interceptions and fumbled from close range before halfback Brendan O'Neill, who had 77 yards rushing, made three yards to touchdown run before halftime. Eli picked off artists of Indians like quarterback Jim Chasey and it included defensive back Dave Hollihan's two interceptions in the end zone. Big green kicker Wayne Herman, Wayne Herman rushed by air in time for second half for Saturday morning soccer, soccer game in Hanover, New Hampshire. Kick, kick 30-yard field goal in the third quarter. Next, Boston College beat Army by a score of 21-13. To this point in 10-game series between Eastern rivals, the Boston College had never defeated Army cadets and had first half looked like more of the same. Kicker Arden Jensen sandwiched field goals of 27-36 yards around left yard, 11 yards to touchdown. Around 11-yard touchdown bursts up the middle by Army running back Bill Roden. So, Black Knights ran off at halftime with 13 0 the lead. The Eagles quarterback Frank Harris, who had a zero goal, one for six passing stats in the first half, was a whole whole new man after halftime intermission with 12 for 13 accuracy. Harris led 78 yard march right after the second half kickoff, but Boston College had to relinquish ball at Army's two yard line. But next time, Boston College took over and it went 58 yards to one yard. Touchdown push by one yard push by Harris. Early in the fourth quarter, Boston College got break on four yard punt by Cadets punter Ron Danhoff and took his first lead at 14 to 13 on wide receiver John Banastalis. 21 yard touchdown grab. The Eagles wrapped it up with 60 yard drive to Harris' 10 yard bootleg touchdown. Next, Syracuse beat Pittsburgh 43-13. Next, number two, Ohio State beat Northwestern, number 20 team in the country, by score of 24-10. Hopeful Wildcats got the first quarter touchdown from fullback Mike Adamley, who had 122 yards rushing on 32 carries as he piled up 102 yards in the first half. Northwestern led 10-3 at halftime. But coach Woody Hayes scrapped, balanced Buckeyes offense, permitting only two passes in the second half, and directing 30 rushes by fullback John Brockington, who had 161 yards rushing on 42 carries and a touchdown. Now, the key was defensive lineman Jim Steelwagon's third quarter recovery of Wildcats quarterback Marie Diagonal fumble of center snap at Northwestern 18 yard line. Diagonal accepted blame, and Northwestern coach Alex Agase shook his head over the fumble afterward. It was a crucial part of the game. Ohio State quarterback Rex Kern who had 74 yards rushing on 15 carries, overcame three interceptions, and two by Wildcats defensive back Rick T. Lander, future Sports Illustrated writer, in the second quarter to score two touchdowns on ground in the second half. So Toledo beat Miami of Ohio by a score of 14-13. As Toledo won its 19th consecutive game, clinching second straight MAC title, but not before hard work in Miami allowed just 50 carries on 98 yards rushing. Cash third quarter break for 10-7 lead. On punt from midfield, 
Redskins defensive lineman like Fred Brisker fell on loose ball in the end zone at the mix up at five yard line, allowed punt to come off back of Rockets returner Jim Banks. Now Toledo quarterback Chuck Ely. Hit passes of 11, 8, 12, and 5 yards, then skirted in for winning 3 yard touchdown with 2.44 left. Next, Oklahoma. Meet Oklahoma State by score of, excuse me, Oklahoma beat Iowa State by score of 28 29. Oklahoma beat Iowa State 29 28. As quarterback Dean Carlson picked apart the Oklahoma secondary as Iowa State jumped to a 21 0 lead in the first quarter. Carlson threw 38-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Mike Palmer and ran across for two scores. Halfback Joe Willie Wiley punched across touchdown for Sooners in the second quarter to add to safety that pulled them within 21-9 at halftime. The OU, OU gained only 133 yards rushing the first half but got it back in game on quarterback Jack Mildred's 75-yard touchdown bomb to wide receiver Willie Franklin in the third quarter. Wiley scored again early in the fourth quarter, but Oklahoma missed extra point kicks on each of its second half touchdowns and were in 2021 21-21 deadlock. The Cyclones of Iowa State came back across the 70-yard touchdown pass in the 28-21 lead with 429 left. Now soon as answered with 37-yard pass caught by attendant Al Titan Al Chandler to Iowa State 15-yard line. Wiley scored his third touchdown three plays later until back Greg Pruitt ran for winning two-point conversion with two minutes to go. Next to Kansas State. Next was Kansas State. They beat number 17, Missouri. A score of 17-13. Now winning its third game in a row, Kansas State beat the Tigers at home for the first time since 1938. Now dominating much of the last few quarters, Missouri came from behind at the Wildcats jump to the 10 nothing lead on tight end kicker John Gorgers, 23-yard field goal, and quarterback Lynn Dickey's 33-yard touchdown arrow to wide receiver Mike Creed. K-State appeared ready to take 17-0 lead early in the second quarter, but Tigers defensive back Henry Stuckey made interception at his 4-yard line and turned to 30-yard line. Another interception of Dickey off the bottom Missouri defensive back Pete Buha went 38 yard, yards down the sideline to the Wildcats 2-yard line and set up quarterback Chuck Roper for 6-inch touchdown sneak. And Missouri kicker Jack Bastable tied it in the third quarter on a 25-yard field goal and put Tigers ahead 13-10. A masterful 38-yard field goal against Wynn past midway in the fourth quarter with 4-7 left. Dickey rallied his purple Pacats for 70 yards in 10 plays. His decisive touchdown pass coming on 20-yard pitch over middle to Creed. Next, Nebraska, the number four team in the country, beat Colorado 29-13 as the Giddy Crowd Largest sports gathering to date in Rocky Mountain region. Got slapped into first quarter reality by two touchdown passes from Nebraska. Quarterback Van Browson to wide wing back Guy Ingles. Rebounding Colorado pulled to within 15 13 on quarterback Jimmy Bratton's five yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter, but missed two point run. Nebraska eye back Jeff Kinney then slapped, stepped forward as Jeff Kinney roared 76 yards on kickoff return. To position Colonel Huskers 21 yard touchdown drive for 22 13 lead. Former recovery at Buffalo's 40 yard line by Huskers defensive lineman Larry Jacobson promptly set stage for Kenny's clinching touchdown run. And finally, San Diego State beat Fresno State 56 14 as the Aztecs, now San Diego State was ranked number 14 in the country, but the Aztecs beat Fresno State 56-14, crushed Fresno State as quarterback Brian Sipe saw his three touchdown passes. Coach Don Coriel's team would run unbeaten streaks to 21 games before losing the year's final two games to Long Beach and Iowa State. So that includes a look at the games that were played for week 8 of October 31st, 1970. Here's the AP poll as November 2nd. Number 1 was Texas. Number 2, Notre Dame. 3 was Ohio State. Four was Nebraska, number five was Michigan. The rest of the top ten rounded out as this.
Number six was Stanford. Seven, Arkansas. Eight, Tennessee. Nine, Air Force. Ten, Auburn. The rest of the top 20 looked like this. Eleven was Louisiana State. Twelve, Arizona State. Thirteen, Mississippi. Fourteen, San Diego State. Fifteen was Toledo. Sixteen was UCLA. Seventeen was Dartmouth. Eighteen was Houston. Nineteen, Alabama. And number 20 was Syracuse. That concludes look at the week that was college football stream review the 1970 college football season done with the um the first eight weeks looking back at the recap of the 1970 college football season tomorrow i'll be doing um week number nine as we you know go into november and try to close out the 1970 uh college football season and, uh, november 7th 1970 that'll be week nine of the games that were played so um, stay tuned for that. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the channel. Appreciate it. Until then, talk to you soon.